Welcome back. I'm David the Good for Prepper Advantage. Chances are there is food all around you and you're just not able to see it. Do you see any food around me? This stuff right here called Haitian basket vine. It's an edible green. I can chop these off, cook them like spinach, and eat them. But most people would not recognize this as anything other than a vining weed. This is a tropical weed. It's everywhere. Back when I lived in Florida, I walked around my neighborhood and I found 17 different edibles within two blocks of my house. All kinds of food. I found roots, I found fruits, I found berries, and I found a lot of greens. Greens are pretty much the easiest thing to wild forage because there are a lot of plants with edible leaves. You just don't know a lot of them. If you live up north, you've probably heard of things like dandelions. That's the one. Oh man, dandelions. You can eat dandelions. And pretty much everybody knows about blackberries or wild raspberries. If you're lucky, you might even have blueberries in your neighborhood. Those things we're kind of used to going out and foraging. But there are a lot of other edibles like nettles. Nettles, you would think, man, those things would sting your throat all the way down. But when they're cooked, you can eat them. There's a lot of other things like that. I'm going to show you today a few things that are in my neighborhood, and then we'll talk about what you might have in your neighborhood. Right alongside the road here, we have some purslane. This is one that you've probably heard of as being edible. It's a pretty common garden weed across the United States and I'm sure a lot of the world actually. The leaves are good. They're high in omega-3 fatty acids. You can eat them right off the plant, raw, and they have a nice, fresh, somewhat tart flavor to them. Just a really cool plant and very easy to identify. It has fleshy leaves and you just break these pieces off and you can eat it, stem and all. Another weed that's pretty common in gardens around the world is amaranth. There's a bunch of varieties of amaranth. Amaranth is in the spinach family and it likes to show up in disturbed ground. So when you break the ground and you put in a garden bed, sometimes you'll turn up amaranth. One of the types of amaranth that gardeners in the south really hate, it's called pigweed or spiny pigweed. And it's got spines all over it and it's one of the nastiest weeds to have to deal with because it just tears you to pieces. It'll poke right through your gloves sometimes. But amaranth, the leaves are edible and it makes seeds on top which can also be harvested and eaten. The most of the wild varieties there's really not enough seeds to be worthwhile. There are cultivated forms where you can plant it and get great big leaves. That's called vegetable amaranth. And then there are cultivated forms where they've been bred for great big heads of seeds and those are called grain amaranth. The wild ones don't have particularly large leaves or a ton of seeds that are easy to harvest, but they're still good. I don't think they're very good raw, but I cut the tops of them off and saute them, put them in scrambled eggs for breakfast, throw them in soup. You can put them in just about anything as a cooked green. And they're quite good. They have a very nice flavor, much like a spinach. Just another thing that you probably have growing in your yard and you might not even know it's there. Now where I live in Central America is probably very different from where you live. There are wild plants all around the world which are edible. In the United States, depending on where you are, you might find Smilax, which is like an edible wild asparagus. You might find actual wild asparagus. You might find pawpaws, persimmons. You could find black walnuts, hickory nuts crack a hickory nut open, it's delicious. My kids used to spend a ton of time cracking them on the driveway with bricks and pulling out that sweet nut inside. I think it's better than a pecan. But everywhere you look, there's something to eat. Out west, skeet trees, nopale cactus. Down in South Florida, you can go along the beach and find cocoa plums, coconuts. Uh, you can find things growing way up in the mountains. You can find edible things growing way down in the valleys, you can find in the desert, you can find it in cold areas. You might find moral mushrooms in some areas, which is a fantastic wild mushroom. It's a gourmet. I used to find chanterelle mushrooms growing around some pine trees, near some pine trees around an old oak in my old neighborhood in North Florida. 
just about anywhere you go there's some food but the trick is is you need to know what grows in your area uh, for example in uh, Bridgeport Connecticut if you take I-27 or you take 127 and you go off of uh, Barclay Road um, third house on the right is Mrs. Darrow's place and she's got an old apple tree out back and uh, on Tuesday night she does the sewing circle at the Unitarian Church you can just kind of go back there and help yourself but you wouldn't know that unless you knew that particular lot one time as an example of this I was an, a foraging expert in Florida I actually did wild foraging tours I would take people out and we would find all kinds of stuff to eat and then a friend of mine said hey do you want to do the uh, Stone Mountain approach trail to the Appalachian Trail with me he says we're gonna do a little like a weekend hike like, yeah that sounds like fun so we did this hike and I thought I'm gonna find all kinds of wild stuff to eat out here well I didn't I had a terrible time I probably could have dug some grubs out of some logs and roasted those but in terms of wild edibles it was such a completely different ecosystem from where I had learned to wild forage that I wasn't seeing hardly anything I knew. I took pictures of all kinds of plants and I took them back home and I ID'd some of them and I looked them up and said, oh, I could have eaten that, I could have eaten that. But when I was there, I didn't have the on the ground knowledge. So what you want to get is on the ground knowledge for your area. There are Peterson field guides. Uh, the Audubon field guides are some of the very best when uh, my wife and I got married, she brought along her wildflowers of North America, I think it was, an Audubon field guide. And I just kept looking through that and looking through that and looking through it. It's, it's organized by flower shape and flower color, uh, locations, that kind of thing. And you can just go through there and you find there are thousands and thousands of species in each state. And a lot of them are edible. There are specific guides to edible plants for, for certain areas. Um, you know, everybody knows like stalking the wild asparagus. Uh, that's that's a classic older guide, but there have been many guides written since then. You might find edible and medicinal plants of the Rockies or edible and medicinal plants of New England. Depending on where you are, there are field guides. So those field guides are really cheap fun. You buy those field guides and you look through them and you start looking around your neighborhood and you're like, I know that, I know that, I know that. And you and your kids can go along and find all kinds of stuff that you didn't even know was there. Maybe you'll find fruit growing in the local park that you didn't know was inedible. Maybe you'll find some greens for the table. Maybe you'll just stop planting salad gardens altogether because you're so good at foraging for wild greens that you don't have to buy it. And I'll tell you what, a lot of those wild plants are healthier for you than the cultivated plants because a lot of the cultivated plants have been bred for being nice and crisp and not bitter and all that sort of thing but they've lost a lot of the nutrition over time. Some of those wild plants are really, really good for you, both medicinally and just as a good food. So I would pick up some of those field guides, but after you get some of those field guides, look around and see if there's anybody in your area that does wild foraging tours. If you can find somebody that's really clever and he can take you out there and you go on a, you go on a tour and look around, your eyes will be opened. I went on a tour years ago with a man named Green Dean who is located down in Central Florida and we went on a tour of this ratty little park and he knew so many edible plants in there plus medicinal plants. I took a couple of my kids and we went along I think we paid 20 or 30 bucks to go on a tour with him for two hours and we came out of there knowing like 30 or 40 plants. Like we started spotting, we went home and we were like, oh yeah, Green Dean said we could eat that, oh yeah. And I was just taking notes and drawing pictures of the leaves as I went. It was just this huge dump of information. And from then on, when I walked around a park, it was like things were lighting up. Food, medicine, food, medicine, all over the place. It's really fun. But you need to know your area because every ecosystem is different. Every climate is different. And you may have things growing 10 miles from your house, which are different from the things growing in the forest near you. The ridge on the top of a mountain is usually dry and the soil is thinner and there's a different ecosystem of plants. In Florida, I got so I would know which edibles I was likely to find based on the weeds that were growing. If I saw some scrubby little prickly pears on the ground and I saw some pines and scrub oaks, I started looking around for pawpaw trees because there was a specific variety of pawpaw that loved that climate. And I could go a few blocks over into a dense stand of oaks where there weren't as many pines, the soil was richer, it wasn't as acid, and I could find 
hickory nuts and wild plums and wild bay trees. We would just harvest the leaves off of them and my wife would put them in soup. Did you know there are wild bay trees growing in the United States? They're all over the place depending on your climate. Some areas, there's stuff that you wouldn't even know was there. So I'm gonna encourage you, get some good guidebooks, put them in your library, go on YouTube and follow different people. Follow Green Dean on YouTube. You can go check out my video. I think it's called uh, Two Blocks, 17 Edibles, something like that. And all these people are doing these tours, but the very best thing is to go and take a tour with somebody who knows your area where you can ask them questions directly and learn because there is a ton more food out there. When things get a little shaky, you know how to go get medicine and food, you're gonna be set. And God has given us a very rich world. There's so much more richness out here than we even know about. Once you learn a little bit of it, you just your eyes are gonna open up and you're gonna be looking around and going, ah, I know this, I know this, I know this. And all your friends will think you're cool. Thanks for joining me. I'm David the Good for Prepper Advantage.